you can easily make $1,000 a day scalping with this strategy every single day, super easy to follow, and I am gonna go through it right now. So basically what we had today, this is the 2000 tick ES futures chart. And this is the only asset that I trade on a daily basis. Now, what we have here is simple price action drawn out on the chart, and I marked off all the trades that were valid following this strategy, and I call this the scalp and run strategy. So let's zoom in, and we will take a look at what's here. So the first trade of the day didn't come until right after the open. Usually I trade before the open, and you can see around five or so in the morning was like around this area, the top of this, and it came down. But unfortunately, even though this move is really strong, there just isn't really very many good trade setups in here. Um, there's some, there's an arguable one right here with this bearish bar, but I'm not gonna mark it just because it was risky in my opinion. And so first thing I did was I measured this leg and then I measured it from here down because as we started to form this other downtrend, that was my target. So what we ended up having here was we went sideways and we got this pretty decent setup here because at first I thought this was a range, but once this thing broke below and it didn't get, and when it got back in, it still went below, I was thinking we actually might have a downtrend in play. So we had one leg down. So then I'm thinking maybe we get another leg down. And we did. So right here, you get a first entry pullback, second entry, second attempt higher that you then can short as a failure. So this is a more advanced trade. So it's marked green. And basically it's with the trend and it's, you have room to the low. So you're assuming that you're at least going to tap this low here, but it could go a lot further and that's a runner. So basically what you get here is you enter your trade one tick below the signal bar and you could ride this thing all the way down to the measured move. You could either just ride it to the measured move and exit for 15 points, or you could wait until there's a bullish bar and exit one tick above it. You would have got 13 points if you did that on your runner. So really just easy to follow. There's no reason to exit this trade until that point. Every candle is pretty much bearish. There's this one doji right here, but I would say that there's no real reason to exit that trade until you get to this green candle or the measured move. Now, this is also a possible long off the measured move because if you count this as a double top, it actually is basically a, uh, it's not really a second entry because you have a possible attempt there, a possible attempt there, but it's really just a measured move. You're really far from the EMA. So if you're going to be risky and try to catch um, the end of a move, that's a possible place to do it. And at this point, you are kind of overshooting the trend line here. So it was possible that there's an overshoot. Now, of course, it could be the case that this is just wider. And, uh, and it's hard to know for sure. But to me, it was just looking way overdone at that point. And there was a little rally or a little relief there. So you could also see this as a double top. And you could kind of see this as a possible first entry, second entry. And this one, it's really just kind of sideways. It's only one tick. So you could look at it like that. So anyway... That's more advanced. That's just a scalp. That's not going to get you a runner. Finally, we get a safe trade down here because now we get a close outside of the of this down channel. We finally get a close outside. And basically what we get here is it tries to go lower right here. So you get a first entry and then it comes up, makes a double top and tries to go lower here. And that's a second entry short 12 tick bar. So not a super small bar or anything, but easy scalp. And uh, it's again, this isn't going to get you a huge runner when you enter on right here because you're really only looking for the low. And uh, but there is three points there. So you could have just had uh, had your runners set to take that low or you could have tried to trail it. But I wouldn't have been looking for a runner there. I would have been looking for it just to test the, the low. And that's what it did. And then it ranged for a bit. Finally, it broke out. Now, when it broke out, it did fail back in. And some people. I'm going to mark this green. I, I mean, some people probably took this. I think it's risky at this point because you don't, you're kind of longing from no man's land. It is a failed breakout. So there are some reasons to like this trade. The reason I didn't love it is that if you kind of look at this, you kind of already have a first entry, second entry, third entry, and they all failed. So that's, it's not really, you know, any reason to think that we're just going to reverse here. But if you took that, it is a bullish bar. It is a failed breakout. Um, at the time, you would have had this downtrend that you probably would have drawn. Something like this 
and it is a close you could you know you could argue this is the close outside a new low all at once because the downtrend is probably something like that you know it might even be like that but either way it is a close outside so if if you did see it like that then you could argue that that's a decent one and if you did take it again i didn't take it here um you know there's over 5 points there so you could have take, rode this thing up you could have just trailed your stops um, and probably t gotten at least three points on your runner or more, depending on how you played it. Finally, it breaks back out and you get this trade here. Now, this one is definitely a more advanced trade, but if you if you saw what was happening here, basically a strong downtrend was was forming at this point. And at the time, I believe I had it at the time I was looking at something like this, like possibly there's a downtrend working like that. Um, so I just, I was thinking bearish bias. And you could argue because this low right here, what is that? That's 5908. This is 5908. It's a larger first entry pullback, second entry short. It's kind of like a lower high. And it's, it's a, well, it is a lower high, but it's also a second entry short. You got room to the low. You're expecting a new low because sometimes when you get the close outside and new and new high, and um new low at all at once, you still get another leg down to try to make a lower low. So sometimes that does happen. So you'd be expecting that at least we're going to come down and test the low. Now you wouldn't have known that you're going to get a a big runner here, but you end up getting one. Um, and you likely get a runner here because the way this played out, it went to here, open here, came up, and then it reversed. So you would have got a runner here. And again, this is another one where, depending on how you played it, you probably would have just stayed in this thing, in this downtrend, and just followed the downtrend all the way down. And until probably, I'd say most people would be exiting after this higher low, um, just because you might be trailing your stops above these levels. So you'd probably have it right here. And then you probably get out there and you catch 18 points on that one. So really sweet setup. And again, your stop loss is only going one tick above the signal bar. So you're not, it's not a huge risk there. All right. So then from here, you get a really nice second entry short. So you get a first entry short, second entry short outside of the trend line. You're expecting a new low. And uh, again, this one, you can see uh, this one, you don't really catch a runner because it comes back to stop out all the break evens right around this level right there. But you can easily catch your scalp. You, you pretty much get your scalp almost right away in this one. You didn't really have to sweat too much. It fills you on this one. It closes there. It does come up against you slightly, but then it just immediately goes down. And so you get a nice easy scalp there. And then from over here, you finally do uh, start to trend upward. So you get your two legs and you see this a lot. You get a close outside. You, you make a new low, but you do get a second leg to a new low on this one. So there's two big legs there. Uh, unfortunately, there's not really a way to enter this trade here. This is tempting, but I just don't think that you can uh, risk that, even though it's a little bit tempting. All right, so you finally form an uptrend. There's not a whole lot in this one. I did measure my legs here, so I had a target up here for two legs. And basically what I saw here was once we confirm this trend line off of these lows, then you eventually have this move here. You pull back. First entry long, pull back, second entry long, really bullish bar. That's an easy one. You enter it. It does come against you a bit, but as long as your stop loss is one tick below the signal bar, you stay safe and you even get a higher low. Um, I don't remember exactly how this one played out in real time. If it fills you before, it, I think what it did was it, it came down it, it, it immediate, and then it reversed up and I think it fills you on this order. And I don't, you don't get a runner here because you can see there. This candle eventually came back and stopped out all the runners, but that's okay. You don't always get a runner. Okay, so then later on, we're coming up here. Now, eventually, we did break out of this. We got a close outside, and I was expecting a new high. Now, I thought possibly we have a possible spike and channel, so I did draw this secondary trend line. Uh, in hindsight, I don't think that this is necessarily... Oh, yeah, it does look like it played out. Okay, sweet. So it did play out because... Sometimes this happens. You get a close outside, new high, but then it turns out there's actually a flatter channel in play. And look at this. We get a close outside. We do break down, but now we're finally making the new high. So it does look like we're getting some kind of a pretty big rally here. Um, you can't necessarily draw this thing 
like this because that just seems too wide. Yeah, that's probably too wide. Um, there might be something crazy like this. Sometimes you do get a crazy trend channel like this where you get this big wide one. I'm just going to leave it on there for now just while we're doing the rest of the video. Um, you do get those sometimes, but you can't always consider those the most reliable. But if this reverses from here and confirms off of this level where you tapped it up here, here, and then there, and then you've tapped it three times down here, then that could be a pretty cool um, channel that we have working up. Uh, we are breaking back into this level that I was considering possible resistance. So we're back in that, and it looks like we're actually back inside this range from earlier. And you see that a lot in the markets where you try to reclaim these areas where there was kind of a sticking point. And so let's take a look over here. So once we broke out of here, I drew this off the lower high. And I had this downtrend. We got a close outside and a new low all at once. So I'm not necessarily thinking of taking a short here. Originally, I was actually thinking that we could get a higher low that goes up and possibly test the new high, but it ends up not doing it. it doesn't doesn't set up properly. It just reverses. And so you you end up getting the close outside. You do get your kind of couple legs down to the new low. It then turns into this move. Now this is just a scalp here, very advanced trade. But basically, what you have here is you kind of have this um, this sort of uptrend working that was sort of like this. And you had already made your new low. And this is just a first entry, second entry short that fails. So if you, if you entered this one, you could have entered this as a failure with basically, I would have waited for it to close. And then you would have got just a quick scalp. That's all you get out of that. Um, and, and it was just an idea that it might reverse all the way back up but it just ended up not playing out like that. Again, that's a really advanced trade. So as you can see, this is already looking like it's not gonna, I mean, maybe, no, nah, see, that's already looking like it's not gonna be the, the right spot. I mean, and you don't wanna have to always move these way up. So this is possibly just a new trend line. What we would do here, and this is just a, a learning opportunity for how I get a lot of my targets. So I'm gonna draw a measured leg there and a measured leg here. And I'm just gonna go like this. And I'm going to assume this is possibly our target. And let's see, it lines up perfectly with that range high. So that is a perfect target to go after. Uh, if you're in a trade, that's how I would be looking at managing it. So anyway, let's go back down. So you have this kind of other leg down. Now there's always measured legs in play. You know, even if you measure like from this high to this low, you know, possibly there, not the best measured leg. But there's always measured legs in play. Even if you measure from here to here, you might have gotten one pretty close. But visually, there's a couple legs here. This ends up being a pretty tight downtrend. And you get a um, close outside and a matching low here. Now, because it's a matching low, sometimes that acts as a new low and the, the trend line has played out. But a lot of times, the market doesn't love that. It wants the test of the new low. So... For here, I just took this, I, I took this short as like my final trade of the day right here. And uh, I saw this as just a second entry short. So you get a close outside of this trend line, you get a first entry short, comes over, and it, it basically makes a first entry short. And then this one goes kind of sideways. It comes all the way up and reverses and closes right here. And you can see this super bearish candle. It was kind of high risk. It was a 12 tick bar. So you're going to have a 14 tick stop loss on this one, entering one tick below the signal bar having your stop one tick above, but it was a really easy trade, um, as you can see here. So you get in and it, it quickly gives you two points. So even if you went for six ticks, you got filled right on that one exactly. Um, on this one, I only went for four ticks just because uh, it was getting later. It was gonna be my last trade of the day. And so I just took a four tick on that one and got out. It was six tick would have worked fine though. And uh, six ticks was mostly what I was going for today, besides on that last trade, just cause I was trying to be done. Um, all right, so you can see here we have a pretty strong up channel working, possibly, possibly something like this. It's a really strong trend here. Uh, we made it to the measured move now, so that's interesting. It's hard to say where this thing is really going to go. I mean, at this point, it could come all the way back up to test this this area. And if you look at the daily chart. You know, what we had on the daily here was yesterday we had this big reversal bar where it came all the way down and did that. It's almost a repeat pattern of yesterday. It's doing the same thing because the candle opened here, pushed all the way down, and now it could end up coming up. Now, if this thing turns bullish, 
then we could have a total reversal in play and this thing could try to make another you know pretty strong move up so we'll see if that if we get some follow through i think there was some scares this morning just because of uh you know all that wild stuff going on in the world and uh you know there's the russia ukraine all the other stuff I, again i don't trade the news but you know you do have to be aware when there's some bad news like that right in the morning it can spook the market a bit cause a pa some panic selling and i think that we saw a little bit of that today uh this thing looks like it's going to get it might get a close outside here you know we made the measured move and uh we're now kind of i think we're matching these highs here it looks like whoops let me just draw that up a little it looks like we're yeah we went just a little bit above those highs finding some resistance there there's probably some resistance at this wick right here where it came up to um, so that's another area. But again, it looks like we did make the measured move. Um, let me just get this thing out of the way. I like to have it on this side typically because it's awkward looking when it comes from the other side. So you can see there, pretty decent price action. Uh, this is also right here, a close outside and a new high all at once. So this thing could totally reverse now. Now, you know, I wouldn't just be shorting this right away. But if there's a decent lower high that sets up, then that could be actually a decent short because you got the close outside and new high on the trend line all at once. And that's, I mean, to me, that's pretty clear. Like the trend is probably not like that, but it could be. So you do have to be aware because what you could get here, it could try to push one leg up after this move. It could try to make an actually another new high and then reverse. You just have to be aware. Um, also, there could be an opportunity for a second entry long here. But this is now played out on the measured move, so it's hard to say for sure. We could end up just going sideways, stuck in this kind of range area for a little while. But I'm going to wrap it up here. It's been a really, really strong day. But this just goes to show you how quick and easy it can be to make some of these moves. I mean, a lot of these trades today could have had you done really early. You know, if you got this one here, and even though that one, you know, these are obviously green, so they're a little bit more advanced. But even on these greens, a lot of these greens did lead to runners. I mean, on the th that's the thing. A lot of the greens were the ones that led to runners today. And you'll see that a lot because a lot of the greens are traps. They're trap trades. Now, those are more advanced. And again, I am going to be covering that more in the course that's releasing soon, how to understand traps and those advanced setups. Those are usually the ones where you get the most runners. Um, sometimes you get the runners on like the blues and the reds, the good, the really, really strong setups. But they're safer setups, and a lot of times those safer setups um, get the stop loss that break even. Now look at this. We got an engulfing bar here. This is going to trap some people. Uh, so now this is actually a first entry long. So what this did was it, 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 trapped all these, it trapped all these shorts. They all got short right here. It immediately went up. They might have had their stop losses there. We'll see. They're going to try to defend this now. They'll probably push this thing down to the EMA. And, and we'll see, there's a bunch of longs who piled in right up here. They're all going to get stopped, most likely. Here's what I think will likely play out here. This will probably come up. It'll probably come down and stop out all these longs, come back to the EMA, and, that'll be give, and then possibly give a second entry long to then come up and maybe test the measured move area, test the high, something like that. So it, it's going to stop out the people who got long right here first, I think. And then it's going to actually give the second entry long and stop out all the people who piled on their shorts. So let's just see. I don't know if I can stay on for much longer here because I got some stuff I got to do and I don't want the video to get too long. So I'm just going to stop it here. But what you should do is just kind of monitor this. This is at uh, basically like nine in the morning Pacific time. Just kind of see how this thing plays out. Now, again, you don't know for sure. And there, there you go. You get a doji. And it's pushing up. So it looks like it's trying to stop out the shorts first. But I still think this is still just a first entry. Now, it's already coming back and testing the measured move. So, you know, you might only get one leg here. Yeah, it looks like you might only get one leg and it might just stop out all the shorts. So there's some bullish pressure here. But let's see. Because actually, some of the shorts have their stops above the high. Okay, here we go. So it's pulling back a little bit. Now, again, we'll see. It could end up giving the higher low second entry long, or it could come down, stop out all the shorts, bounce off the EMA and give a nice one. Okay, so this is actually a lower high. So this is probably going to rinse everybody here. Let's see how this plays out. 
I talked about a lower high before. I'd say this is probably going to come down to the EMA. How much room is that? Yeah, probably. It'll probably come down and stop out all these people if it breaks below this. So let's see if it breaks below. Oh, oh, yep, there it goes. So it's going to break below. Probably going to run down to the EMA, but we'll see. And this is now you can see all these people are starting to pile on shorts on the lower high. And they're probably going to they're probably going to run the stops on all these longs here first, bounce off the EMA and then it's actually going to go up and make a new high unless this thing just breaks through and keeps running. But you can see here here let's measure let's keep the measurement on there. So uh yep, there you go. So even if you so if you went for Four ticks, you would have already gotten filled. If you went for six ticks, you would have gotten filled. So it's exactly the setup I, I talked about before. Um, you can even just mark this one. This is, a, I, I literally talked about this setup before of uh, we late for a lower high. All right, so now let's see. So now you do have a first entry there, and now it is bouncing off the EMA. Oh, it looks like it just completely rinsed everybody. Let's see though, because this thing could still, oh no. Nah. So at this point, at this point, the, you would have had a runner, possibly a runner on your short, and you could have run it down, but let's see what it does. Let's see if it, if it tries to break back above the EMA, and if it does give the second entry long. Now again, this, would, this is just, hey, this is a good learning opportunity. I ended up staying longer than I planned, but you know what? If you get a learning opportunity like this, it's worth it. So we're watching this candle to see if it sets up a second entry long. Um, now I'd start to say this is risky with how that played out, um, you might want a higher low here. So this would be almost like a green trade now from here. If this does break above the EMA and give a strong bullish candle, uh, that's not bullish enough and it's below the EMA. So this is not, even if it breaks above this, it's not a valid second entry long. It might still work, but it's not valid because of how this went below the EMA. So what probably will happen here when it, when it does this, it might break above and trap all the people who get long and then it becomes a failed second entry long and this thing just kind of plummets. So I would not be surprised to see that, especially because we reached the measured leg. So let's just wait and see what it does real quick. All right, so we're getting a matching high. Okay, there it goes, it's breaking above. So his, this is the second entry long. But again, remember, I wouldn't take this second entry long because of how this broke below the EMA. This is, even though this is kind of a bullish candle, it's below the EMA, it's just not very safe. Yeah, does it work? Maybe. Let's measure it out. Yeah, see, if you were in a four tick, you would possibly not get filled there because it might not fill your order. You need it to really go 1.5 points if you get in one tick above the bar. So you'd probably be trapped right now in a long, and it wouldn't have filled you at four ticks, even if you were just going for four ticks. Your stop loss is all the way down here. So your stop loss would be pretty big. And there you go. You can see this thing already starting to reverse. Now let's see though. Um, the, way that, the way that you could enter a second entry here is if this gives you a nice higher low bullish candle above the EMA. So if this thing breaks like right below this bar, but not below this one, then you actually, and you get a really bullish candle that closes above the EMA, you could end up with what's called a second entry higher low confirmation setup. Those are really strong. Yeah, so it looks like the second entry, okay, so the second entry would have worked, but again, I wouldn't have taken that. It's too risky. It is playing out the way that I thought it would, but let's see. Let's see what, what it does here, because even though it played out, it could still ultimately be a failure on the larger move. So let's see what it does here. That's taking way longer than I thought. I, I'm, I was like going to be done like over five minutes ago. So sorry that the it's getting a little convoluted, a little long here, but you know what? It's worth it sometimes. First entry, you can see the second entry. Yeah, it worked, but it looks like it's failing here. Now, again, remember, <clears throat> you had people get long here. You had people get long here on the second entry. So all these longs got stopped out already. Um, they already got stopped out. So that was what happened here for the, that leg down, and that's why it, it pushed so fast. The lower high was definitely a good setup. But let's see here. The second entry, now all these longs, they all have their stop loss below this bar here, right? So their stops are all basically right there. 
And so what you want to see here, if this is going to work, is a higher, a higher low. So you'd want this to now break below this bar and then give you a really bullish candle if this, if this is going to work, if the longs are going to win here. So now we have to be aware that we are kind of, remember, there is kind of a range here from earlier. And it seems like we're kind of getting back into it. So that's interesting. The range low could support. So let's just see what it does. Now, at this point, you've got your first entry, you've got your second entry. Below this bar, it's going to start to turn into, um, it's going to look like, let's see what we get. Let's see if the failure does happen here. Okay, so it's getting close. It's getting close to the low. I'll put, the, I'll put this, yep, there you go. Okay, so there it is. There's the failure. So that's a failed second entry long. That is a really advanced setup. You would mark this one as a green. Uh, it's not for most traders, but that was it right there. And that's why you have to be careful with the signal bars. That was not giving you any confirmation of strength right here where this one closed. And that's the importance of signal bars. And you can see everybody got rinsed. And look at it go now. They are just getting completely rinsed. And now this thing can take off if it wants to. We'll see though. I mean, this time of the day, it's not looking like there's a ton of volume here. Yeah, there could be a downtrend whatever, but this could also just be a range and it's just trapping people. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But that was a nice little setup there just to stop everybody out. And you can see from the low of that candle, it went down another couple points. So, you know, that was a, that was a decent one. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here and I'll be back to do it tomorrow and I'll see you then. Have a good day, everybody.